family and fellow soldiers, I'm the Professor, and this is the Moment of Truth. You know, it's that time of year again, when a lot of black folks are thinking of stuffing their faces, spending time with the family, and calculating how much money you're going to blow between Black Friday and Cyber Monday. But after all these years, I think you know by now, the enemy doesn't take a holiday. So we don't either. Because while you're thinking about turkey, dressing, and the big game, the enemy is thinking about you and planning their next attack. The anti-black violence that we're targeted with is not accidental. This is a culture at work here, a religion to these fanatics. When Travis and Gregory McMichael pursued and murdered Ahmaud Arbery, they were being protected by the corrupt DA Jackie Johnson. She was supposed to be on trial by now, but the authorities are dragging their feet on that one deliberately, the same way they're doing in Texas with the murder of Tatiana Jefferson. They let that killer, Aaron Dean, postpone his trial four times in a row now, and just to show that it wasn't some accident, when the judge who was presiding over the case told the defense that he would not grant any more postponements, they got him recused, which is extremely rare in Texas. But this is the corrupt DAs trying to find a way to avoid prosecuting these race killers. They've seen all their buddies and pals go down and they're trying to figure out how do they stop it. They need a new strategy because relying on the juries to give a quickie acquittal, well, that's not so reliable anymore. So the DAs are trying to use other methods and tactics now. For instance, in January of this year, at the same time that the murders of Ahmaud Arbery were being put on federal trial over the objections of Biden's DOJ, I would remind you, down in Mississippi, there was another racist father-son duo who committed the exact same crime. Only this time, fortunately, the victim wasn't killed. In Brookhaven, Mississippi, Brandon and Gregory Case carried out an attack against a FedEx driver. He was clearly in uniform, but the lie that they were trying to use was they didn't recognize him, and because of that, they felt that he was a thief. They tried to stop his van, and when that didn't work, they fired guns at him, and they pursued him in their pickup truck, the same way those inbreds chased him out Arbery in a pickup truck, degenerates all think alike. Hell, they have the unkempt foot-long beards too, complete with fleas, no doubt. The two thug assailants pursued their victim until he eventually lost them at the interstate. But of course, the entire reason these assailants carried out the attack in the first place was because they were sending a message that it didn't matter if the McMichaels were going to go to prison and spend the rest of their lives, such as they are, rotting in a cell. These two reprobates in Mississippi wanted to make sure everybody knew that there were plenty of other white supremacists who were willing to take one for the team. The FedEx driver filed a police report, and the two would-be race killers were arrested, but the police and the DA got on code, so the killers didn't stay locked up for long before they were released again. The DAs in Mississippi saw what was happening in Georgia, just like everyone else did, and they wanted to make it clear there wasn't going to be any justice if they had anything to say about it. The victim has publicly stated that the police treated him like he was a suspect rather than the victim. The DA gave the two would-be killers a charge of conspiracy and aggravated assault. That's it. So the racists in the DA's office and the police were clearly on code. They understand that trash like the McMichaels, the Kyle Rittenhouses, and the Cases are the irregular forces of white supremacy. Their job is to carry out racial ambushes like these, the kind that the police can't necessarily do themselves. And in every case, we find that these ununiformed killers always have very close ties to the thugs in blue. The police know exactly who these individuals are and coordinate with them. The FedEx driver got absolutely no support from FedEx, by the way. After this attack, not only did FedEx not give the driver any time off, FedEx demanded that he continue to service the same route that he almost got killed on. The victim finally was able to get some time off from FedEx, though it was unpaid. You know, this reminds me of that Frontier Airlines incident. You know, the one where the white passenger was drunk and became violent and began attacking a black flight attendant? That flight attendant subdued the thug and duct taped him to his seat. The airline took the side of the drunk, violent thug. And Frontier Airlines even went so far as to attempt to try to suspend or otherwise punish the flight attendant. And what did he do wrong? He was a black man exercising power over a non-black person. That's an absolute no-no under white supremacy. It sets a bad precedent. You certainly don't want that to become habit-forming for all of the former slaves. 
When that video, however, went viral, public outcry forced Frontier Airlines to drop their attempted intimidation of that flight attendant. But it just goes to show that when black people are attacked by these white supremacists, these companies are on the side of the racists. Now, that doesn't mean you don't protect yourself. You do that at all costs. But what it does mean is understand the white supremacists aren't just the ones who carry out these attacks. They're also the police, prosecutors, and these companies in most cases. We'll continue with the moment of truth in just a moment, but first, a word from the official sponsor of Black Empowerment, Power Tools. There's no telling when something's going to come up, so make sure you carry your power tools at all times. You never know when you're going to need to bring the hammer down, or when you'll have some trash that needs to be blown away, or some obstacle that requires cutting down. Don't get caught empty-handed. Keep your hammer close by. Keep that leaf blower at the ready. And always carry your steel. Power tools. Because no matter what your day job or side hustle may be, there's no excuse for not being ready to put in some work. Now, that race attack against that FedEx driver happened 10 months ago. The victim and his attorney have spent almost a year now trying to get the prosecutors to upgrade the charges to what they should have been, attempted first-degree murder, conspiracy, and shooting into a vehicle. This week, after 10 months, the prosecutors finally got around to having those two thugs indicted and arrested them a second time. But make no mistake, the only reason it took this long wasn't because the DA's office was meticulously trying to gather evidence. They didn't want this to happen, especially not so close to the Arbery trial. They didn't want it to happen at all. They hoped that if they just stalled, then hopefully the victim would begin to give up, the people would begin to forget about Arbery, and that they could have themselves a more accommodating legal environment to bury this one quietly. All these white supremacists, especially the ones with badges, and that includes these slimy DAs, are just waiting to see how long it is before things go back to how they were before. When people will start to get bored with demanding justice for the black victims of white supremacist violence, how long until the old life returns? Well, so far, it hasn't happened. Now, as I've already stated in this video before, and as we all know, whenever these irregular forces of white supremacy carry out their racial ambushes, you can see the police's dirty fingerprints all over it, and this case is no exception. A large part of why the investigation was stonewalled is because the now former assistant police chief in Brookhaven was a man named Chris Case. That's right, he has the same last name as the killers. He only retired four months ago. According to the victim's attorney, then-assistant police chief Case is related to the attackers. Of course, the police department's denying all of this. They're claiming that they already went down this guy's entire family tree. Well, I'm sure that didn't take very long. In Mississippi, the family trees have no branches. But just like the McMichaels and Kyle Rittenhouse, we find there's a direct connection between the assailants and the police. But we're supposed to believe that that's all just some sort of coincidence. And just so you know, the police chief there is black. His name is Kenneth Collins. This morbidly obese bootlick overdosed on those butter biscuits, but you can tell he loves having them slathered by the worst white supremacist in town. The public has called on this chief Collins to resign, but he said, get this, I'm not going anywhere until God makes that decision. That's between me and God. Until God calls me, I'm not worried about what anybody says. Gee, he sounds like every white supremacist thug with a badge you ever heard now, don't he? If the mayor wanted this fool gone, he already would be, but the mayor isn't firing him, so that means he approves of this police chief. Which brings me to another side note. Brookhaven, Mississippi is 68% black, but you wouldn't know it by looking at their civic government. White mayor, white city clerk, Department of Public Works, fire chief, and three of the city's seven aldermen. These two degenerates did this in a city where nearly seven out of ten people are black. And the DA down there, along with the police, sided with the violent white supremacist over the law-abiding black citizens. This is what a race war looks like. And this Collins chump is part of why we have such a hard time gaining ground against the enemy, because we have willing turncoats working for white supremacy among us. The victim of this race attack is understandably worn down by how hard he's had to work just to force the DA to do this much, which is the bare minimum. 
He said that he hopes that Biden's DOJ will bring hate crimes charges against the assailants. But as we saw with Ahmad Arbery's case, Kristen Clark will be the single biggest impediment to justice on that score. If this victim thought that it was difficult to get the DA to finally bring the right charges against the assailants, he should ask Ahmad Arbery's family how hard they had to fight to stop Kristen Clark from selling them out and stop her from giving their loved ones murderers the velvet glove treatment. But understand, this is the landscape right now. White power and their black flunkies are trying to bring back the old status quo and to do it as quickly as they can, because the longer they punish the irregular forces of white supremacy, the longer they consistently arrest and prosecute them, the more reluctant these ununiformed thugs will become. To control a large black population, you need a lot of thugs who are willing to kill. But thugs are not going to be so willing to do so if they understand that there's a good chance that they're going to go to prison. White supremacists are cowards, after all. The DA down there thought that he could wait this one out, stall until the victim gave up and went away. Only the victim didn't go away. There's a lesson in that for all of us. In war, persistence is what wins. But we also have to think about prevention as well. As black people, we have a right to be safe, not just in our homes, but also in public, particularly in the places where we work, even if that job takes place all over the city. We need to understand that these thugs are at war with us. The admittedly modest progress that's been made the last few years to hold them accountable has come as a shock to the enemy. They thought that it would have passed by now, that this was just a societal phase that would come and go, but it hasn't. However, we cannot expect justice when the police are working hand-in-hand -hand with these killers and also doing everything they can to prevent them from being brought to justice. So we have to take responsibility for our own protection. Be ready. It's your right. That way, the next time some white supremacist wannabe killer decides to try to ambush a black person, the target will be ready to give them a special delivery of his own. Return to sender. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Keith B., Daryl Bledsoe, Suleiman Alaji, Sherman Marshall, and Starlet Thompson. Salute to them, and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black empowerment only exists because of you.